Okay, so it's just cost £25 to get in, but you, I got a uh, guidebook as well. Experience the Tower of London guidebook. There you go. £24.99. And the Tudors of the Tower. And welcome to the Tower map. It's a nice present. And this is the way in. There's the Tower, thank you. Just waiting for Pete to pay for us. Walk on down. Let's take this off. It's, um, it's hard to do this. It's warm. It's well, it's not raining yet. And it's nice, close, warm. But it does look like it might rain soon. So, anyway, see you inside. You can just see Tower Bridge over there as well. We'll go into that later after the tower. Okay. See you in a bit. Okay, so we're in the queue to the entrance. It's just down there. You have to queue to get a ticket, then you queue to get in. There's a tower down there. The show over there, just seeing people, medieval show, just seeing people dressed up going over there. And then there's the entrance. And there's a beef here. Great. One of the country places, 50 foot high. The street we're standing on was once known as Mint Street. All these houses along Mint Street used to contain the Royal Mint. This is where all the coins were made and all the bullion was safely stored. But it left here in 1820. They've just left behind a, a lovely little museum which is directly behind you. Well worth a visit, folks, if you get a chance. Now, once the Mint left here, this street changed its name from Mint Street to the name we know it today, the Casemates. Casemates actually means houses within walls. These houses today are used as accommodation. For people like myself and my colleagues, this is where we live all the way around the tower. I don't know if you picked up on it. When I introduced myself, I actually said I live and work here in the tower. Because part of our employment as German Warden is beef eaters. We have to live in the tower. It's wonderful, isn't it? I live in a royal palace. Hey! <laughs> it sounds great. Until you try getting the takeaway delivered. <laughs> <laughs> Your dresser, Tower London, of course it is. <laughs> it's actually easier to go and fetch it if you can get them. Now this place is a wonderful place to live and work, as you can imagine. I meet thousands of people, all walks of life from all over the world, and it's a great pleasure for me. But at six o'clock at night, the tower is closed, and you've all gone. And once you've all gone home, I too can go home. And it suddenly changes from a place of pleasure to a place of terror. Can you imagine <laughs> spending the night in here? And the lights are down. The cold winter's night. The mist is forming. It's really eerie. And what makes it even more spookier is our wives live here also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's going to hear that one. <laughs> now, to your right, in front of the gateway we've just come through, is that tall, narrow archway. It's known as the Sally Port or Royal Entrance. At the far side of the Sally Port is a set of double gates. Through those gates, you'll find a small drawbridge which leads onto the wall. Across the wall, you find steps going down to the river, known as the Queen Steps. Now, in the Middle Ages, the royals and nobles used the River Thames as a highway because it's safer than the streets of London. If they wish to enter the town, they just simply tie the steps, match steps across the wall, cross the drawbridge, and enter through those gates. In fact, in the year 1533, it's at those gates in there where King Henry VIII stood as he awaited the arrival of his second bride, Anne Boleyn, and here to the tower to prepare for her coronation. All coronations start from the tower. Now the moment she stepped ashore, we had all the cannons of the tower fired in a royal salute. The first time ever that happened, and from that day to this, every time we have a royal occasion, we also have a gun salute fired from all. And in fact, next month there's about five gun salutes fired. Duke of Edinburgh's birthday, the Queen's birthday, and various other things. Now, I think history has been a bit unkind to King Henry VIII. I think he's a very romantic man myself. <laughs> well, judge for yourself, because it said when Anne Boleyn arrived at those gates, he greeted her 
by kissing her on both cheeks. He went down on one knee. He took her hands in his. He looked her straight in her eyes. And he promised to love her for the rest of her life. <laughs> <laughs> that is so romantic. A thousand days later, she didn't have to love her anymore. She didn't have a head, but that's another story. <laughs> Okay, one thing they do have here are ravens, obviously. It's um, Tower London after all, and that's what you can hear. Line of Kings developing the visitor to attract. King Henry VIII. You know, I said the queue was there for the crown jewels, but it goes all the way down there as well. Oh my days. I don't think I'm queuing. <laughs> I think the crown jewels are not that important, unless Pete wants to queue up in them. It's all the way down there, up there, round, 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 and then in there. I'll see what Pete wants to do then. Okay, so this is the entrance to the Crown Jewels. We finally made it, and it's ten past one. So, less than half an hour. I'm all the way over there. All the way down there to you in half an hour. So, if you're in the queue for the Crown Jewels, it moves very quick. Okay, wait. <laughs> 